Just got this in the mail. Seeing this new gear issue gets me pretty excited for the coming ski season. Hello, I'm Ron Kipp. Let's talk skis. Step one, buy a pair of skis and learn the difference between downhill, backcountry, cross country, old school, and those weird short skis nobody likes. Let's look at one popular aspect of the ski, width. And to cut to the chase, wide is not good. Wide as in this dimension of the ski, sometimes called fat skis. Wide is not good if you actually want to become an expert skier. Not a poser, but a real expert. The mini jib cart and convince a friend to test it. If wide was good, we would see ski racers, the best skiers in the world, on fat skis. In fact, the FIS, the governing body of ski racing, put a limit on the minimum width. If you want the ski to hold, you need the edge under your foot, not out in left or right field. Think ice skate. Ah, so you're thinking, what about that big dump? Yeah, what about that big dump? Until about 15 years ago, there were no fat skis. And skiers, the good skiers, skied bottomless, snorkel-eligible powder. These are my fat skis. Powder, baby. So if deep snow is such a prize, why do skiers want a ski that actually restricts them from going deep? White skis are easy to ski because they retard the vertical travel through the snow. So you're just skiing the top 20 inches anyway. Big deal. With a narrower ski, the skier actually skis in the snow. Not just skimming left to right on the surface, but in the snow. That's what's fun. I'm not just a proponent of the narrower skis because ski racers ski on them, but because the skiing you do on fat skis is different than the skiing you do on narrower skis. The research shows, on the wide ski, your turns will be slower than on the narrower ski. A uh, duh! That may be why racers use narrower skis. You won't be able to achieve as high of an edge angle. Whatever edge angle you do achieve will occur earlier in the turn, not at the apex, which is the desirable place for your max edge angle. You will use your muscles differently. For example, your gluteus medius. That's the hip muscle used to stand on your outside ski. It will be used less because it will be more difficult to be on that outside ski. Your tibialis anterior and peroneus longus will be working harder trying to get the wide ski on edge, which will be less than if you were on a narrower ski. And you're going to have less knee flexion on the wide skis. What does all this mean? You ski different. Would you use a ping pong paddle to play tennis? No, of course not. Don't kid yourself, you're not really skiing when you're on these toy fat skis. Fat skis do have a place. They provide a large base of support for the intermediate skier who needs help with balance. With this wide ski, the intermediate skier can stay upright, but turning, not just pointing the skis in a new direction, but actually turning across a slope and getting somewhere, like around a gate or a tree, they are much less effective. In fact, the stopping distance will be increased on a fat ski, not so safe in those crowded areas. Okay, before we end this little rant, how do you know what ski or ski width to look for? Looking at a page in a gear guide, we see the dimensions listed usually right under the name. This number right here is the number we're talking about, the width under foot. Listed under dimensions, the 120 would be the tip width in millimeters, then the 70 millimeters underfoot, then the 99, which would be the tail. All those together will make a radius. In this case, it's a 16.8 meter radius for the 177 centimeter model. 
They also build links in 149, 156, 163, 170, the 177 we just saw, and a 184. But the number we're concerned about is this 70. That's the width under foot. That's the middle number given under the dimensions. Well, the ski magazines are a great start. I love the pictures, and they do give dimensions. So what is a good ski width? How about less than 80? Probably less than 70 underfoot. Probably less than my burrito. About four fingers. You've heard of the rule of thumb. How about the rule of four fingers? So much of what we do is showing and not saying. And when you show something on the wrong equipment, it leaves a bad image for kids to follow. So practice what you preach and ski the way that you want the kids to ski on the equipment that you want them to ski on. So bottom line, look for a narrower ski. Enjoy the magazine. Get excited for ski season. We will see you soon. I'm Ron Kipp. Let's be the best.